Rocket Lab might not have the same capabilities or immense capital as SpaceX, but it could easily have a bright future and be a dominant player in the launch industry. The small lift company is rapidly advancing and making progress towards competing with traditional aerospace companies. The company just recently went public on the NASDAQ listed as stock ticker RKLB. New capital will allow Rocket Lab to focus more on growing the company, and they have already begun work on their next generation rocket, the Neutron. The full Neutron design has not been revealed yet, but we should expect a presentation soon. So Neutron might not look anything like the current images I'm using in this video, but I'll use them anyways as a source of reference. Rocket Lab founder and CEO Peter Beck said, Neutron should look like a rocket designed in 2050. As an investor in this company, I'm excited to see what the future will bring for Rocket Lab. I believe there are several huge advantages Rocket Lab has over their competitors. Rocket Lab has the capability of expanding into a much larger market. Today, I want to talk a little bit about Rocket Lab's advantages that should give them a huge lead in the space industry. But first, click that subscribe button if you haven't so you can have access to new content related to the space industry and space stocks. So, let's get started. Advantage number one, Rocket Lab has multiple proven flights. The Electron rocket might be small, but it has flown to orbit multiple times with multiple successes. There have been hiccups along the way, but the company has overcome these issues and continues to improve the launch system. Orbital experience and consistent launches should be a given, but a lot of launch companies haven't gotten there yet. Jeff Bezos might have immense financial power, but his company, Blue Origin, still does not have a rocket capable of sending anything to orbit. An example that talent can sometimes be more useful than cash. Compared to other small launch providers, Rocket Lab's Electron has had 18 successful launches with proven flight experience, regular and rapid launch cadence with a large launch manifest for future revenue. Virgin Orbit, Astra, Firefly, and Relativity all show potential, but Rocket Lab is currently leading in this race with the most flights. Advantage number two, reusability and scalability. Rocket Lab has made steps towards reusability and recovery. This is key for more affordable launches that cut down on cost and make launches more routine. Rocket Lab can innovate and adapt faster similar to SpaceX with reusability. They are also focused on scaling up their capability to deliver constellations of satellites rather than small satellites alone. This explains the need for Neutron a two-stage rocket capable of sending up to eight metric tons to orbit, expected to fly in 2024. Experience building engines and developing manufacturing process will help in the creation. The first stage will be reusable, similar to SpaceX's Falcon 9 first stage, but recently there's been some speculation that the second stage might be reusable too. In a recent interview with Bloomberg, Peter Beck said the Neutron would work in a fully reusable fashion. Blue Origin has also been working on second stage reusability for their orbital rocket nicknamed Project Jarvis. And it is possible Neutron could take on a similar approach. Experience from building, launching, and recovering Electron will help in the development of Neutron. Rocket Lab plans to use $200 million dollars from going public to develop its Neutron rocket. Even if the rocket is partially reusable, it still will allow more affordable prices compared to traditional rockets. Advantage number three, supply and demand. Demand for rockets is growing and multiple options are needed for space travel. The commercial satellite market is big and its growth is accelerating. This is why there is so much more demand for multiple launch providers. Electron can expect many satellite customers, and Neutron has potential to address the growing satellite constellation market, allo allowing more revenue. Beck told a CNBC interview uh, that Rocket Lab sees SpaceX as the only real competitor. <sighs> Ouch, that's a big burn to Blue Origin. Satellite companies have greatly benefited from SpaceX's low launch cost, but SpaceX's satellite constellation network, Starlink, 
has frustrated companies among the satellite industry too, such as Viasat complained to the FCC about the deployment of Starlink. SpaceX is turning customers into competitors. Amazon is also trying to build its own network of satellites known as Project Kuiper. There's no way Bezos would let an Amazon satellite fly on a SpaceX rocket. This is why I believe uh, companies like Rocket Lab look more appealing. Satellite companies might choose a Rocket Lab Neutron over a SpaceX rocket in the future. The military also has needs for multiple launch options. In order to assure access to space, the U.S. Space Force selects at least two launch vehicles to deploy their military satellites under their National Security Space Launch Program. If the Neutron proves to be affordable enough, it could beat out traditional launch vehicles in securing future launch contracts. Rocket Lab could easily threaten the business of ULA, which is already challenged by SpaceX. NASA is also looking for alternative launch systems. The Neutron can launch from the Wallops Flight Facility in Virginia, also the same location as the Northrop Grumman and Terry's rocket, which has a NASA contract to resu resupply the ISS. Both the Antares and Neutron vehicles are similar and can carry about the same weight of payload up to 8,000 kilograms. So if Neutron can be more affordable, they could easily eat into the lunch of an Antares rocket. NASA could offer Rocket Lab a contract for Neutron to deliver supplies to the ISS. A commercial resupply contract like this could be worth over a billion dollars. This is huge. Uh, this would be a huge game changer for the company. NASA has saved billions of dollars uh, for the American taxpayer through commercial options, so I do see more future commercial contracts. My guess is Beck wants Rocket Lab to build Neutron capable of securing valuable NASA contracts. This is crucial for growing the business and making it profitable. NASA also has the Commercial Crew Program, and I wouldn't be surprised if they expand it to new commercial providers soon. This brings me to another great point. Advantage number four, human spacecraft capability. Boeing is struggling with their crewed vehicle Starliner, and NASA only has so much patience with this company. The Commercial Crew Program has proven successful with enabling human capabilities with SpaceX but has shown legacy aerospace companies like Boeing aren't as reliable as they might seem. At some point, NASA will want to welcome other companies to the commercial crew program. Sierra Space's Dream Chaser would most likely win a contract because of its previous involvement with NASA, but other new companies could win a contract to develop and operate a human-rated space system. Neutron is already being designed with human capability in mind, and could be a potential contender for any future commercial crew contracts. This is why I believe Neutron's capabilities are so important. An affordable, reusable rocket capable of delivering satellites, cargo, and crew to orbit could be worth billions of dollars worth of contracts from the military, from NASA, or other areas of the commercial sector. This is why Rocket Lab could have such a great advantage with Neutron because it enables so much potential in space. Finally, advantage number five, diversification. Rocket Lab isn't just focused on rockets. They are diversified in a number of things such as developing satellite systems and other hardware used for deep space exploration such as their Photon spacecraft. Photon is pretty interesting and will be used for a number of NASA missions, including Capstone, an Artemis program mission that will help in the establishment of a space station around the moon. Photon also has plans to be used in the exploration of Venus and Mars. Photon deserves its own video, which I plan to cover in a future video. Diversification in multiple launch pads will help ramp up flights Rocket Lab has three launch pads, two at their private facility in New Zealand and the one in Virginia, ready for launch later this year. This will enable rapid access to space and shorten turnaround times between launches. So, Rocket Lab has many advantages and looks as though they're laying the foundation to become a much larger company 
that could compete directly with SpaceX. A few other things to consider when comparing Rocket Lab to SpaceX. SpaceX's Falcon 1 was much like the Electron. The Falcon 1 took four flights before it successfully reached orbit. The Electron only needed two before orbital success. Electron has had two failures since its first successful orbital flight. The Falcon 9 had one in-flight explosion, one pre-launch pad explosion, and one in-flight partial failure of a Merlin engine resulting in the loss of a secondary payload. The point is, space is hard. SpaceX might make it look easy now, but in their early days, they had issues of their own. Just because Rocket Lab has had several setbacks doesn't mean they should be ruled out. They are making rapid progress, and I believe we will see some big surprises from them throughout this decade. So, cheers to those invested in Rocket Lab, including myself. We are about to see some exciting things in the future. So, in my next videos, we'll talk more about the emerging market of small rockets, and we'll talk about those companies that could overtake the launch industry. Astra is publicly traded, and Virgin Orbit is also going public via SPAC. Uh, these rocket companies deserve videos of their own, which I plan to cover soon. I will cover plenty of more of the uh, space industry and other space stocks, so if you like this video, please subscribe, and uh, you can look forward to new future content. Thanks. I'll see you next time.